So, Boris Johnson, our Benny Hill Prime Minister, a man who lies with impunity each time he draws breath, is going to clamp down on Twitter pylons and the spread of false information if found to cause psychological harm. A liar promising a crackdown on the spread of misinformation. Oh, the irony. He'd make it possible offence with up to two years in jail as part of his ridiculously ill-thought-out online harms bill. So perhaps we'd better start crowdfunding to bring Johnson himself to court if it passes. Trolling on social media is something we've all encountered. People so sad and pathetic and embittered, they've nothing better to do in their lives and set up dummy accounts with no followers simply to be abusive. When this escalates to lots of people dumping on someone, this is a pylon. They aren't nice, they aren't pleasant. And you might think, well, if we criminalize such behavior, wouldn't that make social media a better place? Not if you give it a bit of thought. For a start, unless such people are based in this country, so all can be done about it, since no country passing itself off as a democracy would pass such a law. It sails too close to criminalizing free speech. So you've got a big problem there since the social media community is an international one. For another, psychological harm would need to be proven in a court of law, making it an expensive thing to legally challenge since everything legal these days is expensive. And since psychological issues are incredibly complex and this would make it inaccessible for most people. Pylons, by their definition, involve more than one person, a group of people, but how many exactly? What's the official minimum? What is the numerical definition of a pylon? Well, there is no such definition, of course. How could there be? For some people, just one abusive person is enough to cause harm. So this pylon definition is a little bit yeah, not so good in itself. If they did define it, however, it would certainly mean multiple prosecutions each time such a case comes up. Again, expensive. Let's just cut to the chase, shall we? This is designed to clamp down on alternative media and shield the snowflakes in the Conservative Party and their shills in the mainstream media. They may as well call it, as my mate Rachel Swindon put out today, the offence to criticise the government bill. Well, that is what it all comes down to. The fact is, people are not shy about attacking politicians over their actions. It's called being held to account. These are elected individuals. Being held to account is something they should welcome. But you can certainly quibble about how people ought to conduct themselves when doing so. But when they're these these representatives are, are voting to dump shit in rivers or or drive people into food and fuel poverty tempers can justifiably flare who is acting the more offensively here those suffering or those inflicting the suffering when a good many of these so-called representatives have the nasty habit of ignoring constituents social media allows people to challenge them directly and if they don't like it they should perhaps think about what their actions leading up to it were like the block button is their friend Who'd have, who would have had the resources they'd be happy to waste in the court of law to take such petty legal action? Of course, it would be nobody else other than our politicians and the government politicians especially. But again, psychological harm would have to be proven in every case. This is particularly egregious when you consider the amount of psychological harm their policies are inflicting on the poorest and most vulnerable in society. But they could never afford to challenge this in court if their MPs happen to boast about such policies online. It's very one-sided. This would be extremely one-sided legislation. The mainstream media would benefit as well since they'd never be pulled up by said vested interests. They've got the billionaire backers to see off any such legal challenge for a start. And at any rate, they call the shots. Too many of our politicians of all kinds are desperate to court these media moguls to gain their favor. No, this legislation would be a tool to assist them. They'll take this legislation like a hammer to the small outlets doing real journalism and not the stenography we so often see and attempt to silence them by smashing them out of existence. It'll be interesting to see how this would work in practice, though, against some of the more prominent left wing outlets, shall we say, for example, such as Squawkbox, Canary, Evolve Politics, since they're all regulated and their regulator might have something to say about all of that. Now, this is something I just can't see working in practice. If it were used to wipe out some of the more notorious witch finder groups out there, for example, you know the names, people who do spread false information to defame others, then that would be a good thing. But it won't happen that way since smaller accounts, ordinary people on social media would never be able to afford the court costs to see something like that through. Instead, we'll see people getting taken to court for holding politicians to account, for posting no, I don't know, emojis of clowns at them when they make prats of themselves or back stupid policy because they've been ordered to. 
for criticizing Israel, no doubt, for accidentally typing with caps lock on, perhaps. Twitter storms campaigning on certain issues could be taken as offensive. Memes, the same. Vids like this one slamming this idiocy of a policy, the same. What other sentences could there possibly be, though? Six months suspended sentence for retweeting the agitator? Effectively, any form of online protest could be construed as offensive to the easily offended. And we have a government of absolute weapons who are also a bunch of total snowflakes. It would criminalize dissent. Anyone speaking out could find themselves landed in court, be that individuals, journalists, trade unionists, campaign groups. Literally nobody would be able to criticize vested interests and the government without risking prison. Who would get away with it? The politicians themselves, of course, their loyal media and the blue tick slebs so often guilty of starting pylons themselves. This is authoritarian. It is not extreme to call it out and out fascism. But I also feel strongly that it is unworkable. You cannot legislate people into acquiescence and silence them. You cannot impose such legislation when some of the worst offenders for this are the legislators themselves. I can't see Mike Graham getting carted off by the busies for claiming you can grow concrete or Johnson himself finally getting pulled up on all of his racism. But you can bet we will for demanding of our representatives that they don't vote to let migrants drown in the channel maybe or leave disabled people being left to choose between heating and eating you'll just harden the resolve of more and more people and you can't imprison us all you can stick any fines up your arse as well the more you clamp down the more we'll resist so think again the problem with social media abuse fundamentally comes from the platforms themselves having never taken sufficient appropriate action to do so. If the government was truly about dealing with online abuse and not clamping down on free speech, it would take steps to legislate the likes of Twitter or Facebook to do better rather than just attempt to stop ordinary people from voicing their opinions.